This is the second take to make sure this won't crash. I asked several times where Melissa Ramirez was shot. I was told she was possibly shot at some dirt mound while trying to flee the concert. The dirt mound has become almost famous for several reasons during all of this. That's why you were told that. At some dirt mound. Her friends then carried her to where the memorial is. The idea of carrying a person to that location would be to get them away from the perceived source of shooting. The dirt mound has had and, can, and still has a fence around it. There isn't any other dirt mound. The reason that was said by anybody, anywhere, was the reason you just cited. Uh, if you're going to carry a person, carrying a person, I don't know if you've done this, it's literally called dead weight test. You have to do it if you're a firefighter or wannabe. Um, carrying a person without injuring them, several of your friends can do it, but it's actually very difficult to coordinate between each other. That's why people use a litter or a vehicle. A lot of people have wondered why her friends did this, inferring that they shouldn't have moved an injured person or that this was careless. People do everything and anything and nothing during a chaos. You don't know what you'll do and I don't know what I'll do. I was a complete coward during an incident at a workplace where someone tried to get away after stealing a purse. Within a month, without thinking about it, I stopped somebody with a gun because I'm too stupid to realize I can get shot. I've been this way ever since then. I don't know why. I felt a slight bit of guilt for not stopping the purse snatcher. But no matter how many times a cop told me, you don't do that with someone who's armed, all I could think of was, but, but all I had to do is hit him with a mop handle. I didn't hit him in the hand, by the way. <coughs> you can hit him in the kidneys too, apparently, but I didn't bother with that. He dropped the gun. But the gun was a fake gun, I'm pretty sure. I, we, we didn't discuss that. They just said, no, 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 no. And I'm like, meh. At that point, I had been diagnosed with a particular problem. I start yawning when things get scary, usually. And then I get shaky afterwards, not during. I have to believe they were just hoping she would be okay, and they were trying to prevent her from getting trampled on or shot further. Oh, you mean a rational, normal human response in an irrational situation where that's the only thing you would do if you did it? Yeah. Her friends picked her up, so her friends knew this. What condition she was in. They might know where she was. The person mentioning a, mentioning a dirt mound on the other side of a fence, that person should be ignored and called out. Why would someone go behind the bandstands behind the music, behind the light show, behind the lasers, and sit on a dirt mound after paying a ticket to get into the venue on a three-day pass or whatever? This doesn't make sense. Families detail victims' lives, nothing but good memories, and redact facts. As of December 10th, 2017, possibly, I'll get to why I'm complaining in a minute, it was reported that 26-year-old Melissa Ramirez had been posting on Instagram and Snapchat from the festival. And because her name is so generic, I'll never be able to find those postings if they were allowed to stay up. During and following the shootings in the confusion and chaos, no one could find her. Nothing was confirmed. Friends still had hoped she was alive after getting word of the shootings, days later even. This was not reposted as to what happened. Someone cared enough to try to help her, but honestly, they were in the middle of so much that they forgot to tell everybody, oh, this is where we was, this is where she found, we found her, this is where we moved her. And then at this time of night, or through this methodology, she was taken to the hospital, or not. Or maybe they did and we'll never find it because someone saw fit to erase a bunch of facts because Families detail victims' lives. Friends do as well. Nothing but good memories. Let's try to forget that night. Melissa's parents and siblings hurried from California. They searched everywhere. Long after it was known what happened to her by some of her friends. 
who could have posted under one of her Snapchat or Instagrams. Her parents may not have known how to access that or whether they even existed. We'll never know because no one archived. No news source archived. Heavy didn't archive. Even gore websites that want to play up death and destruction in the United States, even RT, even conspiracy theorists refuse at all costs, just like the mainstream media, no better, to actually to remove totally any ambiguity because that ruins the story. Every time you look her up, hey, you have to type in Las Vegas victim. There's lots of people who are there with the same name. And she comes up and they talk about her being a senior in high school and when she graduated college and what her interest was and she's a fan of this sports team. Where, when, why, how, all the basics are not there. They searched everywhere. They hadn't been informed of anything. They received a phone call from one of her friends, either a Snapchat friend or someone who was there. Someone who was there at the concert informing them that she had died. That's it? Well, she died at the concert. Where is she right now? We're looking for her. What did you do with her? Or were you there when they moved her? Or do you only see her die? Please see BuzzFeed.com's article. The BuzzFeed article does not have any reference like that at all. The website I got it from will also be archived, and it spends most of its time trying to get me to sign up for a newsletter or look at an advertisement, just like BuzzFeed does. Both of these will be archived below in the description. TJOKS and N2NWB with a pound sign symbol at the end. So you can actually get to the exact line, because there's a long list of everybody who died in Vegas with a short little bio instead of what happened. December, excuse me, not December, October 3rd at about 5 a.m. This is what I estimate because the news article is being vague on purpose. Around 5 a.m. and then they list a day, relative date, not the actual date, which would take less space on the screen and would be easily typed in. 2017, use the century and year so that we don't have to think about it. Type in the month, either as oct or number 10 and then 03 or 3 for the third of the month at 5 a.m. approximately. Her parents positively identified the body someplace. Why is this person asking where this person was shot? Because odds are no one knew where she was shot. Or someone did know and didn't think it was important to post this. Don't be a ghoul. We're not supposed to ask these questions. All right. Where am I right now? Three of you on the planet might be able to figure out probable location. One of them is an asshole who's been stalking me for four years. And he's really old and icky and middle-aged, and that's what he does. He does it to get people to pay him money to stop. And the other two people are people who, and serve, has information on me. It's for an LLC, but he knows it. Yes, you can use the location anywhere as long as it shows up as an address. And, he, and he'll get it wrong, because this location isn't the same one. And another person who watches my channel who actually knows me. Who knows exactly where I am. This is where I do all my videos before a certain hour. But if I removed ambiguity by putting the GPS location in, that would eliminate the question. It would eliminate the mystery. That's not news. Day one in a programming class. We're going to make an audio video capture routine using C or Visual Basic because there's one available. It's called AMCAP. AMCAP is a literally a test piece of software you can get a hold of free. It was included as an experiment to show people how to write a proper video capture program. The potato cam routine I'm running isn't as properly written. AMCAP doesn't work the way I need it to. I'm thinking of switching to it anyway and rewriting it. I'm lazy. Anyway, yeah, I taught a class using it. Shut up. And uh, the first thing I tell people is, don't alter these settings because they'll cause the video to be useless. And there's always that one guy in class that wants to be told, I will never let you pass this class no matter how hard you work because you have to take it over again for the next semester. You can't make me do that. Yes, I fucking can. 
because I wrote out in the demand for it because this is the basic acid test day one. If you can sit there and literally cut and paste something in and compile it by just following the instructions, great. If you insist on doing specifically what I told you not to do because it breaks the program, because it's the only setting you can alter that will fucking break it. You can fuck with every other part of it just about. But the one part that says force the synchronization to be 100% reliable, it's literally don't let fa failure be possible button. If you click the make failure possible button when you don't have to, you can't have a degree. Because you've told everybody in the room you'd rather fuck with things than fix them. I will never let you graduate this class if you don't stop doing that for a full semester. And I'm going to watch you like a bitch. Not a hawk. Woof woof. You're going to be tormented and punished and mutilated because good programmers and good researchers on the net are not taught. They're not made. They happen due to aggressive negativity in the universe. The more you flag and the more you harass a person, the more likely they are to be better at what they do. It's a weird thing, but human beings are very stubborn creatures. Journalism class, I actually took part of one. I took lots of classes, audit. Day one. If you do any of these things that cause ambiguity, you are not a journalist. You're a yellow journalist, or a propagandist, or, and the long pause, perfect material for a tabloid. And guess what happened to a bunch of people for another semester? You don't type in Tuesday, you type in the time and date stamp. You don't type in four days ago, or a month and two days ago, ever. But it makes better storytelling. I'm not letting you have a degree in journalism. Journalism degrees are like basket weaving. If you can't get a journalism degree, you shouldn't be allowed to be a journalist. Well, that's not really how it is, honestly, but still. If you do something that incredibly stupid, you shouldn't be allowed to tell anybody what reality is or even report what the weather and temperature is. You're not trustworthy. This last few years has been referred to as the post-truth, or post fact, ex post facto, I don't know, uh, world. We no longer live in a fact-based world. Facts are not considered king. There are a bunch of people out there in the real world that are really upset because of those arrogant uppity bastards who quote facts and the facts don't change. They may be right, but they're really annoying. So their methodology for it, because they're all in the closet before arguably Trump was elected, but honestly it was before then, we all know that. This post-fact world actually started with the Nibiru and uh, Earth Cataclysm 2012 hoax. But I want to believe it, and you can't tell me I'm not an expert. You're just being arrogant. No, you're just misquoting history. That's the same as the Nazis. You're calling me a Nazi! I'm going to act like one! And then it got worse. We tolerate... No. We no longer have a world that's so intolerant that you don't feel it's acceptable, ever to simply misquote a fact. This goes up to and including Christian fundamentalists that misquote the fucking Bible. All. Of. The. Time. BuzzFeed was cited as a source to contain something that the archives show they never said by another website source that was trying to give us information about what happened to Melissa Ramirez. Melissa Ramirez's name is so generic that finding her on Facebook or any place is going to be nearly impossible. And everybody who could have confirmed this or denied it has either a similar, extremely easy to confuse name, or nobody bothered citing the sources again. It's the last one if you're curious. This would have been trivial to fix because it was fixed on the 10th... No. Really? Yeah. The 10th of December 2017. And earlier than that. This information was readily available two days after the shooting. All of this information was up. And none of these sources that give a fuck about facts bothered recording what was really said or done. The reason you can't find out what happened to Melissa Ramirez is that nobody fucking cared, apparently. Families detail victims' lives and so does the media. Nothing but good memories. Facts are not relevant. Sorry to use her as an example, but it's a perfectly, purely perfect example. There's at least half a dozen people who know all the data that's missing. If you find it, I'd be amazed. And if it's posted now, I would assume that it's a lie. And if anybody says she was near the mound, stop listening to them. I don't think that's possible. 
but maybe they can tell us why. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.